Hi everyone, it's Kevin here, known to some of you as the Fat Unicyclist. Today I'm working on a Kingsong 14S, and looking on YouTube, there doesn't seem to be a lot of content around on this particular model, uh, or the other K's 14s, which are pretty much similar on the inside. So I thought I'd video what we're doing, and let you all have a look, and if that helps someone somewhere, sometime, then that's great. I'm breaking this video down into four parts to make it um, easier for viewing. The first part that you are watching now is dismantling the wheel, uh, which is essentially the other parts we're doing. Um, there's going to be a second video on replacing the tyre, or tube, and a third part on the control board being swapped out, um, as this one has a faulty control board. While we are at it, I'm also going to show you a little trick I have for lubricating the pedals to make them work easier. So, let's get stuck into this. Disassembling the wheel can be done with the pedals on, but I find it easier to have them removed because we want to work on those anyway, it makes life a lot easier for us. Pedals are removed with a 5mm hex key. Basically you remove the set screw from each end, and you can then push out the hinge pin. Note the gunk that's in here. This is something that comes from the use of the standard grease uh, that is put on by King Song. And this is why I want to work on these pedals later. I think there's a, a better way we can lubricate these to make them work um, smoother for us. With the pedals gone, we can now remove any surplus grease off the pedal hangers. Now, this is not just because we don't want it there, but because while we're trying to work on the wheel, it'll make a mess everywhere if there's anything left. Just a quick warning for everyone, often when picking for a wheel, um, you'll use the handle and the, the bottom edge of the pedal. Don't do that anymore. With the pedals removed, you'll end up grabbing the wheel and that's going to turn and end up hurting a lot. So uh, just a, uh, something to note there. Now let's do the other side. The first time people uh, remove the pedals, they often think the second screw is loose. This is because they both lock against the hinge pin. And of course, once the first screw is removed, the pressure's off and the second screw will seem quite loose. I should point out, this is different on the new larger pedals from Kingsong. They only have a single set screw in them. You may notice we are outside at the moment. Uh, it's summer over here in New Zealand and I thought our workshop today would be best placed on the balcony. Uh, it's 23 degrees, it's about 75 Fahrenheit. However, it is a little bit noisy. We have a very loud uh, orchestra of cicadas going on in the background, and that's why I'm doing a voiceover on this video. If you want to hear why we're doing a voiceover, it's because the original recording sounds something like this. Next, we need to remove the side covers. So the screws are found around the two sides under the LED rings and behind the top and bottom pads. The bottom pads are best to be removed completely. I'm doing this here with a car upholstery tool. This comes in a set uh, with some other tools. I'll show you those shortly because they are quite useful for working on your AUC. The top pad on the 14S is challenging as it is surprisingly thin. Most of the bulk is actually the case behind the pad uh, that's been sort of stretched out because of the size of the batteries they're trying to fit inside the case. That makes it quite difficult to remove. Now you can just remove the top part where the pad is thicker. Uh, all you need to do is have access to the four screw holes across the top. But I prefer to remove it all as it can make it a lot easier to refit once the pad's been cleaned and prepped. To remove the upper pads, I start from the bottom where the pad is thinner. And again, working with the upholstery tool, working basically to push it away from the shell rather than pulling on it with my hands, which is what can make it tear. Don't worry about the bits of adhesive um, and where it's stuck. Uh, we'll be removing all that adhesive later on, so it's not a problem for now. 
Kingsong use really good 3M adhesive for putting their pads on, which actually makes it quite a challenge to remove. When I put the pads back on, I actually use a much weaker adhesive uh, because if I want to take those pads off again, it's going to make it easier for me. I think that, that when you're riding the wheel, you're actually pushing the pads inwards anyway, so there's no real risk of them dropping off uh, with a lesser adhesive um, used in place. And when I do want to pull them off again, if that's quicker and easier, then that's a good thing. And of course, if you have an EUC bodyguard, that's also going to help hold things in place. And there it is. The next thing we're going to do with these pads is to remove all of the adhesive residue. Some of this is going to be easier than other parts. Just be careful on the, the pads themselves not to, to tear the rubber while you're trying to pull off that adhesive. Cleaning the adhesive off the shell is a lot easier and the upholstery tools are really useful again for this. When you've got off as much as you can um, using some tools, soft tools, then you can finish this off with a rag being um, dipped in eucalyptus oil and that really cleans off the last of the residue giving you a nice clean finish ready for when you put the pads back on. And of course now uh, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I want to point out that the upper pads on the 14S, um, in, in my opinion, are the most difficult of all the Kingsong pads to remove, mainly because they're so thin. Most of the other pads have actually a lot more thickness to them, or at least the ones you need to remove uh, are thicker and that makes them easier to work with and less likely to be damaged. Remember to take your time when you're pulling off um, these pads. I'm quite lucky that I have spares sitting on a shelf, so if I do damage one, I can replace it. Of course, that comes at a cost. Uh, more importantly, if you only have the one set, then take your time, because you obviously don't want to damage them at all. Once again, the adhesive needs to be cleaned off. Uh, when it's thick like this, it's actually even easier. Uh, I won't do this now, I'm going to do all of that later on. Uh, it's the sort of job I find is great when you're sitting down in front of the TV with a glass of wine in the evening. Now we're ready to unscrew the covers. There are four screws across the top, uh, four found under each light ring, and four at the bottom by the pedal hanger. That's the four smaller ones on the outer corners. We're going to start by taking the light rings out. It makes it much easier to find the screws. Uh, this is easily done using another of the upholstery tools. Actually, let's stop here and let me show you these upholstery tools that I'm talking about. Everywhere I've seen these, they come in a, a pretty standard set of five. The first is a hook uh, with a, a loop uh, at the end. I've never used this. I'm not sure what it's for. There's a mini pry bar. Uh, I've used it occasionally, but it's not one of the go-to tools that I, I would use on a daily basis. The three that I really use all the time, um, there's the wide one that you've already seen, and a narrower version, which is much the same thing, but obviously gets into a much smaller space. There's also a very thin version. Now, this is softer than the EUC shell, and that means it's not going to cause any damage to it. And you can see mine's actually taken damage because it is softer than the shell. This means that I can work with the unit and not cause any damage to it. These tools can be found at your Harbour Freight uh, in New Zealand, somewhere like Ripco. Um, any sort of automotive store seems to have them. Now, back to these LED rings. They're levered out from the top. There's actually a small hole towards the bottom um, side of the top end. And with a tool like this, you can lever in there and use that to pull it up. Don't lift it too far, as the light ring needs to be disconnected first, because the LEDs are fitted to the inside of it. These actually come out easiest when they're wiggled, um, the, as the catches alternate down the length of them. So they should pull out fairly easily if you do something like that. Next, we're going to unscrew the outer shells. On the 14S and the 14M and D, uh, it's a newer design with the inner shell having brass mounting posts. So all the screws are 
M3 machine screws and that makes them nice to work with much better than the older designs that are screwed into plastic. It also provides an option for us uh, if we want to replacing the, the Phillips head machine screws with a hex head M3 machine screws which if you think you're going to be doing more work on your uh, unicycle in the future and you want a nice reliable head on your screw it's something you could look at changing. There are also five larger screws here at the bottom that hold the inner shells onto the pedal hangers. We don't need to remove these at this stage. Um, we will need to do that for the tyre change, but it's best left till later on. With the screws removed, we can now lift off the outer cover. This is done by popping the plastic clips that are around the edges. But we also need to be careful not to lift it off too far until we've disconnected the speaker cables that are connected onto that outer shell. Here's a new one to show you as a comparison. So notice the clips around the edges here and here. Um, so with the top, this end, basically we need to release it from the side of the wheel here and here. Once it is loose, you can lift it slightly to find those speaker connectors uh, underneath it. It's a two pin connector with a spring release. So this is the inside of a Kingsong 14S which other than the larger battery there, uh, it's exactly the same as a 14M or 14D. Um, except for, I suppose also for the 14M is there's no speakers. Obviously the battery is here in the middle. Um, this is the motor side which has the extra cable running down below the battery through to the axle of the, the wheel. Both the battery and the motor have their connectors in the middle and the control board is located at the top which is where we're going to be heading later on. While we don't have to remove the battery in this particular um, exercise, uh, be aware that there's a number of small rubber blocks positioned around um, the battery holding the, the wiring in place. These are semi-adhesive, um, so depending on what you're disconnecting or moving, uh, they may come out. They can easily be put back in. Uh, there's no specific places for them. It's basically where they need to be put and it's to keep everything nice and tight while you've got those covers off. The battery itself is fairly robust, but remember it is more exposed than normal, so do take a little bit of extra care while you're working on the wheel. We need to turn it over now so we can do the whole cover removal thing again from the other side. As we're removing the LED rings, uh, the connectors here just push together and just pull apart so as you lift it out you should be able to find them quite easily and remove them. If you don't have any of the soft upholstery tools that I'm using you can use a screwdriver just be very careful with the angle of it and try not to damage the wheel at all because the screwdriver is obviously a lot harder than the, the plastic. I should also point out here that the M3 screws holding the outer covers uh, on are in two different lengths. The four across the top here are slightly longer than the rest, um, all the rest being the same, slightly shorter length. Just remember that, most important when you're putting things back together. Now we will be actually changing the control board later on, but if you're just changing the tire, some people do say that you only need to remove the cover on the motor side of the, the unit. And while you can do it that way, I really don't recommend that as it puts a lot more stress on the covers and the wheel as you're trying to remove the motor and just make everything work as you need it to. So with both covers removed, we're now ready to carry on and change the tire or replace the control board. So I'm gonna finish this particular video and you can select another one from the playlist to see how to do what it is you want to find out more about.